Hello, and welcome to Walks with Amanda. Today, I wanted to talk about um, homeschooling versus public school. And I wanted to share my experiences so far with both, um, because I know that in today's day and age, um, a lot of parents are um, starting to homeschool their kids and pull them out of the whole public school system because of the things that are being taught and, you know, just the general fear of, you know, what could happen, um, especially with all the school shootings and just different different things going on in our world today. Um, so I wanted to share my experience. So as I said before, my son is 10, uh, going on 11 now, and he's technically in fifth grade. So I'll give you a little background about, um, I'll start with the public school and the background about how we got to the point we're at today with the homeschooling. So um, when my son was five, obviously he started kindergarten and the school he was in was a very good school, um, public school, but they were known for their, you know, just good teaching and um, they were known for good test scores and they just, they had an agenda for these kids. And um, that year he got a kindergarten teacher. It was her last year. She would be retiring after this school year and she was on her last nerve. <laughs> um, it did not take long for me to start getting phone calls from her and emails asking to meet with me and um, she just she had a very bad attitude and basically she was telling me that you know my son can't sit still he doesn't listen um, he interrupts the class you know basically all the bad behaviors that you know the teachers cannot stand in the classroom because it just disrupts the flow and it gets in their way and they don't have time for it. So um, I met with her and his other teachers because they, you know, there was a reading specialist that he saw because he didn't, you know, know how to read. And um, this was only kindergarten, mind you. It was a half a day. It wasn't even a full day and um, just had so many problems with that, you know, that teacher in that school year. Um, I was literally, you know, talking to this teacher every single day after school and it was a nightmare <laughs> any mom's nightmare and you know at the time I was like oh my gosh like what am I doing wrong what's wrong with me and I'm I must be like a terrible mom that you know I'm having all these problems well come to find out you know I had spoken to a few other moms there was only about five boys in the class and I kind of talked to those moms um, and they actually told me the same thing that the teacher had a problem with their son too and it might not have been the same exact issues but um, this teacher particularly had a thing for um, for boys they she just couldn't stand them she wanted all of them you know medicated basically and um, there was just a problem all around for all the moms that you know had a son in, in that class that year so I found that out after the fact, like a couple years later after talking to a few of the moms. I didn't realize it at the time. So I fell into a serious time of just anxiety, fear, depression. I was just like, I am the worst mom in the world. Like, what the heck am I doing wrong? So the next year for first grade, I made the decision um, to homeschool him and I had originally wanted to homeschool him from the beginning but my husband didn't think it was you know the right thing and he should go to school so I listened to him and you know he started in kindergarten well once I had all these issues in kindergarten with the teacher in the school I decided you know what I'm just gonna do the homeschooling so first grade came around and I started homeschooling well my son <laughs> had a very strong rebellion towards me teaching him anything. I mean, he didn't even want to listen to the ABCs. Like we're, we're talking, it was like total resistance from my child. And, you know, of course he learned some of the basics in kindergarten, but it's only kindergarten. They don't really learn too much. Um, so 
as the first grade year went on, I pretty much gave up trying to teach him anything. And, um, you know, I started researching, um, you know, there's different methods of teaching. And of course I came across, you know, the whole unschooling idea of, you know, just let your kid learn at his own pace, you know, give him opportunities to learn, but don't force him to learn anything at the time. So I was like, all right, you know, what? I'm going to give this a try. So I did. And I can't say now because I don't really remember, but I'm sure he picked up a lot of different things here and there, but it wasn't a very good thing at the time because he still refused to, you know, just listen to anything I was saying. So, um, about halfway through the first grade year, I came to a point where I was just like, I was scared because at the time we were living in a state with a very strict homeschooling policy. You know, you had to get your kid tested and there had to be, you know, um, some sort of interview with a certified teacher at the end of the year to, you know, just basically certify whether or not you actually taught your kid anything. So I started getting really scared and really worried that, what am I going to do when we come to the end of the year? And he didn't learn anything. So about halfway through the year, I decided to re-enroll him back into the school. <laughs> so at this time, they got a new younger principal who was way nicer than the last one and was way more willing to work with me on the issues. Um, and so he went back to school around February. So his teacher was super nice, you know, but once again, once he started, um, you know, getting back into the school routine, he just threw up his arms. He was in rebellion, causing so much distraction for, you know, the teacher and the class that they pulled him out and, you know, had him go to different classrooms and just, it was a nightmare. I was literally at the principal's office every single day. Like it was, it was terrible. I was so exhausted and so, you know, just weary from all of this stuff I had to deal with with the school. And eventually what they did is they brought in the evaluation team and the school psychologist and, you know, they did a full report and evaluation on my son and they recommended this alternative school for children who were having the kind of issues he was having. So at the time, my husband had really good insurance through his job, which covered the entire thing. So I was like, all right, you know, let's do it. So by the time we got around to him enrolling into this alternative school, it was pretty much almost the end of the year already. So um, he went to this alternative school. And the, the, now the thing is, is sure, they they were, you know, technically keeping up with what he should be learning. But what they more or less focused on in this alternative school was behavior. So they had a lot of psychologists and social workers and people like that there, you know, doctors, different people um, involved teaching the, the kids there different skills for dealing with stress and, you know, school life and just different things, you know, and he did great there because it wasn't really focusing on actually learning anything in terms of schoolwork. So he ended up getting his tonsils out that, that at around that time too. So he was out for like two weeks. So basically he ended the whole first grade year with having learned absolutely nothing. Um, so <laughs> following year, second grade, um, back into the swing of things, he had an amazing teacher who really wanted to get to the bottom of, of things with him and with me. She had been teaching for a long time, so she had a lot of experience and she was just such a sweet lady. I'm really glad that my son had her because I don't know what would have happened if we didn't get, get, get her. She really, um, she really took an interest in, in my son. And so we got back together after second grade started, she noticed he was very far behind and, um, you know, he needed some extra help and, and whatnot. So they called the evaluation team back in and they had the school psychologist do a full report, you know, test this time. And basically what they recommended was put him on Ritalin. <laughs> You know, we hear so many stories in our culture today about how they're medicating all the boys to sit still in school. And, and, you know, I was, I was kind of against it at first because I was like, no, like, it's just the easy way out for all these teachers, you know, like, why should he have to go through that if, you know, maybe it's not that, you know, and I just kind of, um, went back and forth about it and didn't really 
want to believe that that might be what he needed. So I kind of put it off for a while. And then finally, once, you know, a few more months went by and he still wasn't improving, they had put him into, I don't want to say the slow class because it wasn't the slow class. It was just, um, an, it was like a, an alternative classroom at the school for kids who really needed like one-on-one -on -one teacher help. And so he went to that and the teacher in that class was amazing as well. And he did start to learn some things here and there, but you know, after a few more months and things weren't really improving that, that well, um, I decided to take him to the doctor and see if the medication would work. So um, went to the doctor, got him diagnosed and he was put on a popular um, AD, ADHD medication. And literally the first day he took it and went to school, the teacher said it was like a complete, you know, 360, everything turned around. He was paying attention. He was participating. He was getting along with the other kids for once. And um, he just, it just took off. And I was so relieved and so happy because all I wanted was for him to just be able to learn and to go through the school like like everybody else, you know, and not have to have all these problems. And when I tell you how heavily it weighed on my shoulders and made me feel like the worst mom in the world, I, I was just brought to tears because I was like, thank the Lord that finally something, you know, is working here. So, and it worked so well that he was caught up to the regular classroom in six months, he went into second grade not knowing how to read, how to do math, any of it. And he got all the way caught up within six months. Um, and it was amazing. And, you know, they we kept having our meetings with the teacher and everything. And um, it, was, it was great. You know, they gave me such good, you know, reports and he was doing so well. And um, he just, he got straight A's after that. It was, it was amazing. So, um, you can only imagine how relieved I was when that happened. Well, the next year, third grade comes along and he's back in the regular classroom and he stayed in the regular classroom the entire year. He, he was just like everybody else, normal, a normal kid learning, getting good grades. He got all A's, you know, he was just doing amazing. However, <laughs> um, the medication did have an effect on him where, you know, he didn't, he didn't want to eat a lot and he was very, um, I just noticed he was very, he just wasn't himself when he took it. Um, obviously I didn't see him during the day cause he was at school, but the days that he was home and he took it, I, I didn't like the, what it did to him. And so in towards the end of third grade, um, I was going through some own things in my own life and marriage and situation. And, um, I, I just decided that, you know, he can read now he, he's caught up, you know, he's practically done with third grade. He's doing great. I'm, I'm ready to homeschool him again because all along it was my plan to homeschool him because honestly, I didn't want him, um, growing up in the public school system because I just know for me, I grew up in the public school system and, you know, all it takes is one bad friend, one bad influence to just turn your life the wrong way. And that happened to me. And I had a lot of experiences that I should have never had um, as such a young person with kids at school and boys. And, you know, I just wanted something different for my son. So I had already made the decision that once he learned how to read and really, you know, got caught up with that, I was going to pull him back out. And so, um, that's what I did. I pulled him out towards the end of third grade and we finished the year off doing homeschooling. Well, it became very apparent very quickly to me that this medication that he was taking uh, was not, was just not right for him. He, he like I said, he turned into uh, somebody different, not, not technically in a bad way, but it just wasn't him. He, he, whenever he took it, he would just get really calm and all he would want to do is sit on the couch and not really want to do anything. And when he didn't take it, he was active and happy and, you know, doing different things. And it just, I didn't like what I saw. So 
Um, it was right then and there that I decided I'm taking him off this and if he's going to be home, he doesn't need this anymore. So I took him off it and um, within a couple weeks, he was back to his normal self and feeling better. And surprisingly, the advantages of this medication, like how he was curious to learn and different things like that, that actually stayed with him while he was off it. And so I when I brought him home for the rest of the year, once the school year was over, he, he just blossomed into this new kid. He, you know, he had turned nine years old by then and he was interested in science. And so he would watch all these amazing science videos and do these science experiments. And he was just curious again. And it was so awesome to see because for so long when he was little, you know, it just, it was a nightmare. So, um, that was pretty much our experience with the public school system. Um, I know that there is, there are just so many people out there with their sons, especially who are facing these issues where, you know, the kids, it, you know, the teachers just want to medic, have all the kids medicated that are acting up because they can't deal with it. It's not, it's not according to their agenda in the public school for any kid to have issues or, you know, behavioral problems or can't sit still or whatever. It doesn't fit their agenda. So their answer is medicate them. And I am thankful that for the time that he was, my son was medicated, he was able to catch up and learn how to read. And, you know, those struggles are behind us now. And so for the time that, it, that we had it, it was useful. But I just don't think it was meant to be forever for him because ever since, um, you know, I pulled him off it and let him, you know, do his own thing, he's been totally fine and I've never looked back. So what happened when, um, so after the summer of, of third grade, when I pulled him out and took him off the medicine and everything, um, I had continued to research homeschooling and different, you know, ways to homeschool. And I decided, you know, my son is not like everybody else. He is very active. He likes to build things. He likes to, he's, you know, he's interested in what he's interested in. And so I did not pick a curriculum. I didn't even, I didn't plan anything for fourth grade. I decided I'm just going to let him live and learn. And so the state that we, we had actually moved during that time too, to a different state and the state we're in now, um, there's an option that if you have a college degree, you can technically open your own private school um, at, where there's no government involvement. So, and that's what I did because I have a degree. So I was able to, you know, open this, you know, school, which really isn't a school. It's just me at home with my kid, but that's okay. It's legal. It's perfectly legal. Um, and I have no, you know, demands on what I teach or any of that. There's no testing. There's no evaluations. It's just, I'm in charge of my child and what he's learning. And that's what I really wanted, honestly, all along. So a lot of people thought I was crazy for, um, especially my family, I was crazy for wanting to to completely let my son just um, not have to learn anything and I fought every one of them over and over about it and said you know trust me I know what I'm doing he's my son I know that this is what he needs and I, I saw it happening before my eyes he was just like okay so one of his major interests ever since you know this time that I'm referring to has been World War II history. And when I tell you that my son can tell you every little detail about World War II, he can tell you every little detail about World War II. He is so um, fascinated by it. And what I discovered, and it was also confirmed through this time, is that children will learn what they want to learn. <laughs> it, it was just as simple as that. I didn't have to make him learn World War II history. It's just that his natural interest for it was so strong that any problems he had with paying attention and, you know, learning things melted away because he was so interested in it. 
So that happened with a lot of other things too, um, not just World War II. He, was, he started becoming interested in um, survival um, you know, skills and he taught himself how to build all these survival kits and how to start a fire with a flint. And obviously I oversaw it, but you know, these are all things that he was interested in. So he learned it and he could still tell you all about it to this day. And so um, I was just so happy to see that he was learning and following his interests. And yes, I was not teaching him anything technically. So, um, so we did that for all of last year. So all of fourth grade was, was that. It, there was no, I didn't make him do anything. So um, coming into fifth grade this year, uh, I decided, okay, you know, he had all this time to adjust to real life and he had time to follow his own interests, but I would like to do something a little more structured for fifth grade. And so I created my own curriculum that was very simple, just covering the basics, you know, uh, writing, spelling, math, just basic everyday stuff that, you know, we'll actually use in real life. Uh, and we started that this past fall and he, he was fine with it. He did it. It was no big deal. Well, after a couple months of that, I decided, you know what, this... I really want him to have a little bit more because this might be a little too simple um, because I saw how easy it was for him. <laughs> so I actually decided to give a curriculum a try that I had known about since he was in kindergarten and first grade when I tried to homeschool him the first time. Um, it's by a lady named Amy Marion. She's on YouTube and she has a blog called plainandnotsoplain.com um, and she has totally free um, curriculum for each grade. She's, she's been raising 10 children on, you know, her, her whole life. And so she's had a lot of experience with homeschool and she ended up creating this amazing free curriculum for each grade. And you, you actually have the option as well to buy it on Amazon. Um, it's just one book. It's got everything you need. And she also just basically covers the basics, but her basics were more in depth than mine. So, um, ever since probably about a month or so ago, I've been doing that curriculum with my son and he's, this is the most amazing part of this entire conversation that I wanna share with whoever's listening is that even though I didn't teach him a single thing in fourth grade, he's doing this fifth grade curriculum people like he was in school the entire time and I'm not exaggerating. I mean, he just knows the stuff like, so basically the whole theory that if you just let kids learn what they want to learn, they will pick up everything else is true because it's, it's happening. It happened to me and my son and he, he knows the answers to these questions in this curriculum that I'm doing with him now. Um, and I didn't even have to teach him the stuff. So, um, it really is amazing what, what, what can happen when you just trust, you know, that children were meant to live and learn, not be cooped up, you know, in a, in a classroom all day with kids their own age. And, um, that's kind of what I wanted to share too, is like, you know, my, you know, my opinion, my beliefs, whatever about the whole situation with, with public school and homeschooling, you know, I came to a lot of realizations over these couple of years that, you know, just of all the mistakes that happened in my life from being in public school and, um, just, just all the different things that can happen when a kid has to go through the public sy school system and, you know, maybe it's not their thing and maybe they don't learn that way. And so they start feeling, um, you know, bad about themselves and like they're not good enough and um, they just feel stupid, you know? And I, I know this because that was me growing up and going to school. I, no matter how hard I tried, I could not get the grades I wanted to get. And, um, I just felt dumb and like I wasn't smart. And, um, I internalized these things for a really long time and it ruined me. It ruined me. It made me not even want to try anymore. You know, I turned to drugs and alcohol as a teenager and just a lot of things that maybe could have been avoided if I had the chance to stay home where I belonged, you know, with my mom, um, learning things that were you know, gonna help me in real life, not how to diagram a sentence, you know? And so 
throughout all this time that my son's been home, um, of course I've been teaching him real life stuff, you know, just, just everyday real stuff, how to make his own food, how to do the laundry, how to, you know, take care of himself because honestly, that's what's going to matter when he grows up. And, you know, me and him have worked on our relationship and he's worked on his relationship with other people in his life and just growing up and maturing, um, being around me instead of a classroom full of kids all day. I mean, really? So, um, I just, I, I'm just happy. I, I feel good about everything that I've, I've done with him, even though so many people in my life went against me, said I was, you know, making a mistake and it wasn't right. And he's going to fall behind if you don't teach him anything. And, you know, it's not going to work out. And just so much doubt came at me and so much fear came at me from everybody. And I had to be like, no, you're wrong. This is my child. I gave birth to him. I know what he needs. I'm with him every day. I see what he needs. I see what's working. And obviously I tweaked it and, you know, changed things around more than once now. And it's working out just fine. So I really truly believe that I've done the right thing. And, you know, maybe if you're listening and maybe you went through a similar thing or maybe you are thinking about pulling your kids out because of all the things that i just mentioned um different things that just happen and honestly it is not hard i mean if you have a curriculum like the one i'm doing by amy marion it is so simple and um to the point that you don't even really have to teach them anything because it's all right there. It's very simple. It's simple stuff. Like, for example, today my son was working on um, plural uh, nouns and single, you know, single, it, like things like that. I mean, it's, it's just spelled out for you and um, it's great. It's not some big old thing that you have to do and no, it's very simple. It covers the basics. And in terms of um, history and reading, and stuff, my son loves to read. So I don't even have to make him read. Once he actually learned how to read, he loved reading. And so he reads all kinds of books. We go to the library. I find him books at you know thrift stores and just different things that I think he might be interested in. And he loves it and he reads it. And he's very smart. He's you know, it's, I, I honestly believe just from the fact that he's been reading so much over the past couple of years, that that's actually what has helped him to know all these things that we're working on in the curriculum now, because he already knows it because he's been reading and, you know, so it does work out. Um, I actually, I don't know anyone in this town we're in that homeschools. Um, so I've really had to rely on online support, you know, just reading other people's experiences and you know, blogs and stuff like that. I've read books about it, just different things about homeschooling and unschooling in particular. Um, and I've gotten a lot of encouragement and support in those ways because there's been plenty of people before me who have done it um, and I won't be the last. So um, again, if you're thinking about um, taking the plunge and pulling your kids out of public school, I'm here to say it is a lot simpler than you might think. I mean, once kids have the freedom to sleep and eat and move around and learn what they're interested in, you wouldn't believe the change that occurs. I mean, really, my son went from down and depressed, wouldn't eat anything, to happy, alive, and learning all this stuff that he's so interested in. And it was just a complete change. And I can't like stress it enough. It, it's amazing. And not only that, when your kid is home with you or if you have more than one child, you know, that's your help right there. They can help you around the house. They can do chores. They can help you with younger siblings or babies or whatever. And, you know, you don't have to try to do everything all alone anymore if you're at home. So I think that's really important also um, if a child is homeschooled that I really believe that they learn a lot more responsibility than someone who's going through public school would. I mean, I know for me, my entire childhood and young adult years revolved around um, going to school, doing sports and other activities and friends. And um, that was it. I had no responsibility until I was old enough to drive and have a, a car, you know, my own car and a job. Um, I had no responsibility at home. So, you know, 
that didn't help me very much when I grew up and had to be on my own and make decisions that I had no experience whatsoever with with making wise decisions and so I made a lot of bad ones and I'm just trying to learn from my own mistakes from my parents mistakes and other people's mistakes of what not to do um, to avoid seeing my son grow up or live the way that I did or other people you know so and even if you know like I said on the other other you know audio even if he grows up and makes mistakes I just have to trust that I did the best that I could as his mom and honestly I believe that what I am doing is the best for him and so um, I really hope that if you're thinking about it you'll you'll hear what I'm saying and really consider it because honestly there's no better place for a child to be than at home living a natural life in a natural environment not a forced one you know there's just no better thing for your own child so um, I really support that and encourage that. Now, on the other hand, if you, your kids are in school and you really don't have the option of having them homeschooled, it's okay. You know, my advice to you would be if they are in public school, um, that maybe you could spend a little time one on one with them, teaching them important life skills and how to make good decisions and how to take care of themselves when they are around so that it's not such a shock when they grow up uh, like it was for me you know and probably tons of other people so those are that's my story that's my experience with it and um, that's my encouragement to you if you're listening uh, you're doing the right thing every day is not going to be perfect and honestly it's all about figuring out what works for you if something is not working in your homeschool routine or or whatnot you can change it you have a, a zillion options there's no limit to what you can do when your children are at home with you um, and if they do need special attention or special care or even medication at home, that's okay. If that's what they need to, to be fruitful in life and to get it done and, you know, then, then by all means, don't feel bad. I know I felt terrible until I had the support of certain people in my life um, for my son and the whole medication thing when he went through that. Um, I felt, I felt like such a bad mom and I don't know if, if you're feeling like that, don't just don't you obviously love your child or you wouldn't be listening to this from a lady just walking on her own you know um so just take comfort in the fact that you are their mom and you can choose to do what works for you and your children and it doesn't matter what society says and it doesn't matter what anybody else in your life says that is something that i found so much freedom from i found freedom from the fact that it doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. Just because their kid could read in kindergarten and is a you know a student with no extra help, that's not me and that's not my kid and it's okay. I don't have to measure up to what the public school system says my kid has to measure up to or me as their parent. So don't let all of that get to you if that's something that's really weighing on you. Um, opinions are, you know, that's all they are. They're just opinions and validation, I believe, is for parking. So <laughs> um, you don't have to prove yourself to anybody and you don't have to make your kids prove anything to anyone either because all that does is teaches them to grow up trying to please everybody else instead of doing what is the right thing for them. So I hope that this, this story and this walk today has been encouraging for you and feel free to reach out for any um, additional resources or anything like that you feel if you feel the need um, and I just thank you for listening and I'll talk to you again soon